Georgia. Last year, Georgia made some mistakes late in the game, and Carolina came roaring back to win 27 to 20. The deep man is 44, Horace Smith, from Thomasville, Georgia, to receive the kickoff of the Bulldogs, South Carolina, wearing the white today. Rex Robinson in the red here will kick off for the Bulldogs, and we're underway. High floating kick. Goes to Smith in the end zone. He'll put it down. South Carolina will go to work. First down at the 20. Gary Harper opens at quarterback, a senior from Florida. George Rogers will be the tailback. Johnny Wright, who's a very good running back, 200-pound fullback. Horace Smith is the flanker, and he's 180 pounds. Ben Cornett is uh, 6'2", 220. And Willie Scott is 6'5", 240, both big targets. They operate sort of a double tight end as they come to the attack and George Rogers on the first play of the game gets four yards out to the 24. They line for South Carolina. Chuck Slaughter 250 pound tackle. Joe Doyle a 240 pound guard. Mark Austin a 240 pound center. Steve Gattel 260 pound guard. George Streptulay 255 pound tackle. Big guys from tackle to tackle. Second down and six, it's Rogers. Big hole up the middle. George gets a first down as he flashes across the 35. He goes to the 36. So he's picked up 16 yards and two carries. Robert Miles, Jimmy Payne, Eddie Weaver, and Tim Parks, Pat McShay. The down men in the Georgia defense. Linebackers are Ross and Taylor, Werner, Williams, Welton, Hip, the secondary. They play on Bermuda grass here at Sanford Stadium. It is first down, South Carolina. As Smith goes wide to the right side, Scott Flex is out there with him on the right side. Sometimes, this time he stays in close out of the eye. First down as Rogers goes in motion. Harper gives to the fullback, Johnny Wright. Wright dodges, wriggles, and turns something out of what appeared to be nothing. He went right, he came back left, he found a little crack in it, he picked up two yards, maybe three. You get two wrapped up in trying to cover one man and somebody else will beat you like a drum. And that's one of the things that's worried Vince Dooley in preparing for this ball game today. Don't get consumed with Rodgers. Second down and eight. Gillespie is into the ball game at flanker. It is Harper. Back to throw. Harper's pass. Loop to the sideline. Knocked away. Fine play by Chris Welton, the rover. He was a half a step from intercepting that football. Excellent defensive coverage on the part of Georgia. They were in perfect position. Good run action fake to the inside where Rodgers held the linebackers in there, but the secondary was in perfect position. Now it is third and long for South Carolina. The football is at the Gamecock 38 with Horace Smith wide to the right side or the open side of the field. On third and eight, Harper back to throw the ball, loops it downfield, throws it in the crowd, incomplete. South Carolina will have to kick the ball, the pass intended for Willie Scott. Unexpectedly, they go away from Rodgers after they pick up the first down. Yes, I was very much surprised because the strong suit of the Gamecocks has been the possession football. They went to the air twice after Wright picked up four yards. Chris Norman, deep for... South Carolina to kick it. Scott Werner will return it. Norman, a freshman, knuckle balls it up. It's short, and a fair catch is called. And Georgia will have the football after a 32-yard punt. Buck Ballou will open at quarterback. Herschel Walker will be at tailback. Jimmy Womack at fullback. He's a good running back, too. Amp Arnold is a flyer outside, and so is Lindsey Scott at split end. So the Bulldogs' first possession will be from their 30-yard line. Not enough wind to worry about. Temperature 68 degrees, and it goes to Walker. And Walker gets a yard to the 31 before he is buried by the Carolina defense. Jeff Harper, a 240-pound tackle. Jim Blakewood, a 230-pound guard. Wayne Radloff, a 230-pound center. Tim Morrison, a 260-pound guard. Nat Hudson, a 260-pound tackle. And Norris Brown, the tight end, 6'3", 215. Second down and nine for the Bulldogs from the 31. Ballou hands the ball off. 
on a bit of a delay to the 32. It'll be third down and eight. The Carolina defense lines up with Phil Ellis, Province Weaver, Allen, and Henderson up front. Linebackers of Baxley and Cater at Skipper Bridges, Bowen, Perlot. They are the secondary people. Third and eight for Georgia. Amp Arnold comes wide to the open side of the field. Ballou is back to throw on third and long. He hums one. It is caught by Arnold. Arnold's got a first down at the Georgia 44. Here's an isolated look at the Georgia flanker. Great pass receiver, and if there's only one thing we can say about this Georgia team, the greatest improvement has been in the passing game. He just comes right down, gets right into the seam between the defenders, and Ballou puts the ball right on the numbers. And the ball is just short of the 45-yard line. First down, Bulldogs. Carolina man almost jumped, gets back in time. No flag on the play. The handoff or the pitch back to Herschel Walker. Walker is out close to the 46 before he is brought down. Andrew Province, a sophomore from Savannah, makes the tackle for the Gamecocks. The Georgia passing numbers for the year are reflected there, Era, but they put the ball up quite a bit against Kentucky last Saturday night, and I thought that was going to be a tip off to what we might expect of them this afternoon. Well, they have not historically been a great passing team, but uh, George Hafner, their offensive coordinator, has gone to the air, and they're doing a good job. Call it second down and eight. Walker with the football, trying to get outside. Good pursuit for the Carolina defense, and they've got the big guy, Hal Henderson, the defensive right in, and rode him out. He is from Charleston, South Carolina. So it's going to bring up third down, and they'll need six yards. The referee in the ball game is Robert Allier, the umpire Bob Ebersold, the linesman George Shupert, line judge Joe Carroll, field judge Al Granning, and the back judge is Denny Phillips, and the referee Allier does have a microphone on him today to define the penalty calls for all of us. The football is at the 49, third down and six for the Bulldogs. Ballou back to throw. His second pass is a long one. Downfield. Arnold's there. Off his hands. Incomplete. He was wide open behind Harry Skipper. He almost pulled off a big play here. He weaves to the outside. And then he just drives right up the field and runs straight by, by I think it's Harry Skipper, number 26. And the ball is just overthrown. It did go through his hands. It would have been a very difficult catch. Mark Moore in the punt now for Georgia. Troy Thomas is a deep man, a big rush, a, a bad snap. The ball is bouncing around, bounces off a Carolina man, but it is recovered by the Gamecocks. Coming up with the football is Mark Bridges, the senior from uh, South Carolina. Keith <laughs> Spring. That was a fantastic response by Malkowitz. Look at here, he fumbles the ball. Watch the reactions, the quick reactions. He can't get the ball in his hands. It goes away. Now watch this immediate reaction. He kicks the pilots oh. in the air. That is one of the greatest quick reactions that I have seen on the part of an important play. Terrific play by Malkowitz. Well, it's mistakes that oftentimes determine a game. That time Malkowitz almost made a big one. He got 16 yards out of the punt. Carolina has the ball just shy of the 35, and it is George Rogers. Out to the 37, close to the 38, before McShay brings him down. You know, I haven't seen a play like this in a long, long time. The snap was perfect. He fumbles the ball. He comes over to regroup it and re-grab it, I should say. He doesn't get it, but watch the ball bounce up right here, and he gets his foot right on it. <laughs> that is terrific. Well, it was not a bad snap. I could oh, saw the ball go right straight to him. It just, he stone-fingered it, that's all. The handoff is inside, and Rogers across the 40 to the 44. He is a yard short of his first down. It'll be third down and one. George has carried four times. He's picked up 25. Well, this is what we expected to see. Two tight ends, one flanker back, and they're going to muscle the ball up the field, the very thing that Vince Dooley was concerned about, the possession football of South Carolina. Third and one. There's your first down. Rogers carries up to the 49. It looked like those two backs might have started a little quick, but no flag. That's the other formation they'll get into. They'll split the backs and run the veer, something that Carlin has run for years and years. The eye, and then they'll line up in the veer, and we'll see that most of the afternoon. That's why I was surprised, Keith, on that second series that they uh, went to the air so often. 
Rodgers now totals 30 yards on five carries. First down, Gamecocks their own 49. No score, first quarter. It's Rodgers. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. He muscles for a yard to midfield. Rover Chris Welton came looping in. In the defensive scheme of uh, Georgia, the strong safety has to come up and play in because they play a split six on one side, a wide six on another, which I'll get into a little later in the game. But it does put pressure on the strong safety because he's the weaker of the two ends. And that's where South Carolina plans to aim some of their attack. The play is in the middle, and they're carving a hole in the middle. George Schechterly and Steve Gattell, that time the right tackle and right guard. Gattell from Ormond Beach, Florida, and Schechterly from Berwick, Pennsylvania. They're 255 and 260. A lot of muscle there. It'll bring up third down now with the football sitting at the Georgia 44. Third down and three. From the middle guard position hit Rogers just about the time George got the ball. So Johnny Wright, the fullback, had carried it on the previous play, found some room, but this time no place for Rogers to go. Weaver just whips his man, and Rogers has, as, as you said, Keith, no place to go. Great defensive play. Eddie Weaver is six foot two seventy. Chris Norman, low snap, handled the bounce. Block! It's blocked. Ball is rolling around inside the 40. Number 41, Pat McShay blocked it. Big play. Ball is snapped a little low. He has to go down to field it in just those fraction of a second. Nice up with his left. Too many steps here as a result of the low snap, and it's blocked by McShay. Look at him lay out and get that ball. And Georgia has the football. Call it the South Carolina 41. With a market and Walker cuts it over the left guard and runs it to the Carolina 33. Herschel Walker, he's 6'1", 224, and a freshman. It's interesting that in both kicking situations, one was blocked and the other one, Malkowitz made a fantastic play to get the kick off. Otherwise, South Carolina would have had great field position. Second down, about two and a half. It's Walker. He's close to the first down. Looks like he may be just short. The philosophy of uh, South Carolina defensively, they have three big men in the interior in Weaver and Province and Allen, and they kind of stand up the offensive linemen, and the linebackers, Baxley and Cater, will wipe off to the hole, and they're their leading tacklers, of course, as a result of their uh, defensive principles. Ronnie Stewart goes in at fullback for Georgia. 202 pounder. Lawrence K goes in at tight end. Third down and one. Walker. He's got the first down. He's at the South Carolina 26. Big block from Stewart, the fullback, who had gone in. They came and lined up in the power eye. And they just hammered it in there for the first down. Georgia rushing now. Walker carried it seven times for 19 yards. There's George Rogers on the bench for South Carolina. First down Bulldog. Call it the 27 of South Carolina. And Herschel Walker around the corner on a sweep. is down to the 10. Again, it's Ronnie Stewart, the fullback, throwing a big block, leading Walker around the corner. It was a beautifully blocked play. You can see Walker gets plenty of leverage at the corner. Number 33, Stewart is leading. See Walker in slow motion here, sees the daylight, cuts to the inside, finds the seam. Stewart comes down and throws the block right there in the right corner of your screen. And finally, number 26, Harry Skipper makes the play. Mark it on the 11 of South Carolina, first down for Georgia. Walker again, over the right side of the five. He ran in behind Morrison and Hudson, and Province brought him down. He's carried nine times. He's gained 40 yards. And the ball is just touching the fives. Second down and four for the first down. 
The thing about it, you give that eye back the ball 30 or 40 times, and you know somewhere along the line he's going to pop a big one. Walker. Over the top. Runs into the Carolina goal line defense with Ricky Haygood in there at middle guard. The strong safety, Pat Bowen, has come out. Walt Cater was the man that turned him upside down that time. The ball is marked inside the five. And it's third down. They need just about four yards for the first down and just a little bit less than five for the touchdown. Interesting to see whether or not they want to go for the touchdown via the air. Well, they put Bowen back in at safety, so I think Jim Carlin feels that way. Nope, they got a walker, and he's cut down right at the line of scrimmage. A big hit in there by one of the linemen, number 81, Hal Henderson. They decided to settle for the field goal rather than take any risk of an interception or any play that might misfire and lose the opportunity to put points on the board. Well, with Rex Robinson on hand to do your kicking, it's not a bad decision. <laughs> That's right. Robinson in 1980 is 10 out of 15. This will be a 22 yarder. He's two for two from this distance. Pops it square, but hooked it a little bit and it's out. He hit it high and hit it way long, but he hooked it out of there and Georgia comes away empty. Well, hop. From the side, it looked good. He hit it solid, but as we look at it in replay from the end zone, you can see he did not hook it. He just never got it to come back right to left. It might have been better off if they'd run a play more to the center of the field. It's a tougher position for the sidewinder to kick the ball, so they missed. So Georgia comes away empty, and here's South Carolina giving the ball to George Rogers, and he runs it across the 30 for a first down, getting a big block from the left guard, Joe Doyle. And now Rogers totals 39 yards on eight carries. Well, I tell you, he really is a bull. Tough to bring down. Rogers, the senior, the prime Heisman candidate, and Walker for Georgia, who's done all of the running so far today for the Bulldogs, only a freshman. And they're both just terrific. First down for the Gamecocks. Harper, the quarterback, gives it to George Rogers. Good blocking on the left side, and he gets the football out to the 34. He picked up three on that carry. Well, South Carolina's not being very fancy about anything, and they're not concerned that Georgia pretty well can guess who's going to get the ball. They're just running right at them. Well, that's been their success during the entire year, as a matter of fact, during Rogers' career. It's not a complicated offense. It's very simple and fundamental, and they've been successful with it, and I'm sure they'll stay with it. All at second down and six from near the 35. Georgia's got it again, and Rogers hits it out to the 37. Frank Ross, linebacker, 48, made the tackle for Georgia. Rogers has carried 10 times, 45 yards, versus Walker's 11 carries and 41. Well, they were confronted with the same situation a moment ago, and that's when Weaver came through and knocked Rogers down for a couple of yards lost. Let's see what Jimmy Carlin decides to do here. Gary Harper, the quarterback, senior from Hialeah, Florida. Third down, they need four. Outside to George Rogers, he does not get it. There were two Bulldogs out there waiting for him, Pat McShay and Chris Welton, and they got him. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation next Monday matches the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns. Walter Payton and company coming on, middle of the season. Ryan Sipe and the Cleveland Browns, who have become a big factor. And here's the punt. Again, Norman took a long time to get it away, but this time he hit a howitzer. Werner fields it for Georgia and brings it back to about the 20. That was a 48-yard punt. Time is out on the field with 2.02 to play in the first quarter. The toughest ticket in the South. 62,200 between the hedges of watching and roaring and stomping and howling and having a good time at Sanford Stadium on the campus of the University of Georgia in Athens. 19 yard line, they mark it. First down for the Georgia Bulldogs. No score, 2 0 2 to go to first quarter. And Baloo back to put it in the air. Goes deep. 
And it is complete. It is caught by Lindsey Scott, the split in, a 41-yard pickup, and he beat Mark Bridges on the play. Looked like Mark Bridges got lost back here, got turned around, didn't know where the ball was. Here's Lindsey Scott coming straight up the field and running a fly pattern. Now watch Bridges seems to get lost here. He's looking at the defender or the receiver, then he turns, and the best he can do is just to come back and make a block or a tackle. Hello turns and gives it to Herschel Walker, and Walker from the 40 is down to the 35, and Walker now on 12 carries for 46 yards for the big freshman. Jimmy Carlin told me that probably if there was any weakness that he had in his defense, although they were fairly solid, he was concerned about his secondary. Second down and five for the dogs. Walker. A game tackle him, but he still finds a way to wiggle for uh, about three yards, and it'll bring up third down two. We're going to find out about Herschel Walker's durability. Certainly, he's carried the ball 13 times already. The first quarter isn't over. We'll see what kind of effect that has on him in the fourth period. We've got about 52 seconds to play in the first quarter. Walker is the only Georgia player to carry the football on the ground. Double tight end Brown and K. Stewart in the block. Now, now he goes in motion. It's Walker. Wraps it. And reaches for it and gets it. Back at the 40. It'll be fourth and 10. So Walker dropped it. Well, if there's one thing that occurred during that series, that long pass really changed the field position. Let's see how this occurs, this fumble. The ball is perfect, absolutely perfect. He looked up and was looking forward to read the daylight, and it, it could be a freshman mistake. 57-yard field goal attempt, the longest of Rex Robinson's career, 53 yards against Alabama in his freshman year. He hits it. It's long enough. It is good. 57 yards. <laughs> Can you believe that? He misses a chip shot and then hits a 57-yarder. And the Georgia Bulldogs get on the board as time runs out in the first quarter to lead the Gamecocks three to nothing. So Rex Robinson gives Georgia the three nothing lead on the 57 yard field goal. That's the longest of his career. It is a record for the University of Georgia. It is his 51st career field goal, which leaves him just five short of Tony Franklin's NCAA record. We we'll go to the second quarter of play as the teams change directions on the field. And Robinson to kick it off. He hammers it in the end zone. Way back there, there'll be no return. Smith makes the catch. It'll be South Carolina's ball at the 20. Well, you can see the value of a great kicker. He has allowed no returns on the two kickoffs that he's had which means the team's got to go 80 yards. Those are the second games today following this one in the respective regions, Pitt, Syracuse, a and SMU, Ole Miss, LSU, Washington State, Oregon, and Western Kentucky, Moorhead State. We'll also have highlights for you of Oklahoma, North Carolina, and Missouri, Nebraska. First down for the Gamecocks at the 20. Harper hands the ball off to the fullback, Johnny Wright. Wright's got a yard. That's it. It'll be second down and nine. Nate Taylor, number 47, a sophomore from Tifton, linebacker, made the stop. Well, a strong suit of South Carolina is not their passing game. It's their running game. And they're going to have to loosen up the defense. I think they'll have to go to the air a little bit. Yeah, those two linebackers are snuggled in there pretty tight, aren't they? Sure are. Rogers. Got some great blocking around the corner, and he carries it out to the 37-yard line for a South Carolina first down before Pat McShay brings him down, a senior, and Pat is from Anderson, South Carolina. That's what I said. Forget about passing. Just to get the ball to George Rogers. Here he goes to the corner. Look at the good blocking and the people coming back to the inside. He gets that corner. He's a 4-5-40 man. Look at him come in here. He is a load. 12 <laughs> carries, 63 yards. First down. 
Harper wants to throw it. He gets it off. The pass is off the hands of the flanker, Horace Smith, the junior from Thomasville, Georgia. He was open. He should have caught it. Harper put it right there. It went right through his hands. It'll be second down and 10 from near the 37 of South Carolina. In case you don't know what a gamecock is, it's a fighting rooster. That's what it is. Roger spins it to the 40, just across the 40. Brought down by Nate Taylor. First quarter number. Well, they fl reflect pretty much what we thought coming into this ball game. The first downs are pretty close to even, and of course the yards rushing are even. But the total yards, uh, Georgia, as a result of their passing. That one play the difference. Was 54 yards, then no yards for South Carolina. That one play was 41 yards in their passing. So that made the, that, was that one play that made the difference? Yep. Just over the 40. Third down, seven. Harper. All the time in the world throws for Smith. No good. No good. Harper's up to argue about that one. Smith hollering he had it. Harper thought he had it. Two officials right there said no, he did not. Ball was right there. Let's see what happens from this angle. His back was turned here to me. There's Harper putting it right in here. As he falls. Now it came out. Yep. Norman DePont. Beauty. Oh, it's a dandy. Runs Werner all the way back to the five, and he lets it go in the end zone. So he nailed it. 60 yards. Timeout. 3 nothing, Georgia Lee. Georgia owns the football. First down, Georgia, their own 20 yard line. Bulldogs leading by a score. Three to nothing, and Herschel Walker carries the football for one yard where he runs into Emmanuel Weaver and Andrew Province. Province, 255, sophomore from Savannah, Weaver, 250, junior from New Orleans. Played very well defensively, South Carolina has. They only give up 106 yards per game, but they have been vulnerable through the air, giving up 153 yards, and that has proven out in the first quarter. Second down, nine from the 21. Buck Ballou, blocked. Number 74, Chuck Allen, the 250-pound senior from Anderson, came hammering in to get him. The pass was blocked. And up on the railroad tracks, the Hill people, some of them spent the night there, as many as 5,000 of them up there. Railroad tracks, the foundation for their seat, and the train does not run on game day. I hope not, huh? Walker is out to get a new shirt. Carney Norris, a sophomore from Spartanburg, South Carolina, at tailback. Buck Ballou wants to throw it. He's getting heat. He's sacked back at the 12 by Walt Cater, number 59, linebacker from Steelton, Pennsylvania. I tell you, that kind of pass rush takes a lot of pressure off of that secondary. It's the best pass defense in the world. Don't give the quarterback any time and knock him down or sack him or knock the ball down. And they did that in the last two plays. Fourth down. Malkowitz in the punt. He provided a moment of drama. His first try. This snap is pretty good. This kick is away. South Carolina is going to get good field position out of it. Fair catch at the Georgia 43 by Troy Thomas, a 30-yard punt. 11:48 to go in the first half. The Bulldogs lead three to nothing. <laughs> go dogs! Oh, you hear that on the weekend down in this part of the country. South Carolina now with the ball at the Georgia 43. First down. This is an opportunistic zone for them. Georgia sets up with a five-man front. Linebackers are in very close. And George Rogers gets it. And he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A great play by Dale Carver. 
A sophomore from Melbourne, the defensive end. Did a great job. He beat Chuck Slaughter, number 76, as he comes across. There he pitches the ball out. If you look to the right here, you see Carver beats number 76, Slaughter, and gets in and knocks him down for a, what is it, a two or three yard loss? Yep, three yards. Rodgers now, 14 carries, net 63 yards. Second down, 13. Ball is back at the 46. They hand the ball off. Rodgers is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Just how by Frank Ross and Tommy Thurston. And I mean, they really hit him. Beautiful defense by Georgia. Reacted immediately. Frank Ross, a great football player, steps right in here. He's getting supporting help from, I believe, can't quite tell, Tommy Thurston. The other linebacker, yes. Yeah, Tommy Thurston. Ball is at the 45, third down and 12. Ross is another young man from South Carolina that came to Georgia to play. A lot of these young men have crossed state boundaries to play their football. Down the line, handed off to Rogers. Rogers on a drive to the 40, and it brings up fourth down. And enter Eddie Leppard, place kicker for the Gamecocks. Rex Robinson, a 57-yarder to put the three points on the board for Georgia. And now it is Eddie Leppard. Nope, they changed their mind. He's gone, and in the punt is Norman. I'm surprised they didn't go to the air on that play to try to pick up the first down in this four-down area. They're compelled to punt from the 40. Leppard started out. Norman came. The ball bounces back to him. They're having trouble with the snaps. He hits a knuckleball in the air trying to hit it out of bounds, but can't do it as it goes into the end zone. Mark Loggins is the man doing the snapping for South Carolina, and he's had trouble with it. He's bounced two of them back. Here are some of the other games scheduled on our coverage of NCAA football this season. November 15, one of the games will be the big one, possibly the big one of the year, Notre Dame at Alabama in Birmingham. November 22nd, USC-UCLA, and the others you saw there, Penn State and Pitt, and Notre Dame-USC. Here's Buck Ballou. He's got it up. It is incomplete. The pass intended for the tight end, Norris Brown, number 88. It appears that the game plan of uh, Georgia is to try to eat up big yardage from their own territory down into South Carolina territory via the pass and then go to the ground. They've done this on virtually every possession that they've had. Second down, 10 Bulldogs, their own 20, 9.45 to go first half. Six-man front for Carolina. They give it off to the fullback. And Jimmy Womack, the senior from Warner Robins, picks up three. Womack's a good little football player. Both he and Sturt are in there, both about the same size, about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, about 200 pounders. But they're tough, they're block, and they're not big ground gators, but they very steady. Third down and seven. Look out for Amp Arnold. He's wide to the top of the picture. Malou back. He throws it short. It goes to Walker. Walker out of the backfield. Gets the Georgia first down up at the 34. So Herschel Walker catches his first pass of the afternoon. Well, the principle that they use, they fake the Herschel Walker to the inside to hold the linebackers. Then when they see that he doesn't have the ball, they expand back for the receivers. And, of course, they dump the ball over onto him. Michigan State jumping out to a 7-0 lead over ninth-ranked Ohio State in a big tenor today. First down for the Bulldogs. And here goes Walker, and the first penalty flag of the day goes right into the stack, and it came out of the umpire's pocket. So let's see what Bob Ebersole has called here. It's going to be a big penalty, 15 yards for holding. And so the Bulldogs make... The first mistake of the afternoon to draw the penalty flag, and it'll back them up 15 with 8.47 to play in the first half. They lead three to nothing. Holding offense. First down. Ball is on the 20. First down, the ball is just inside the 20. Close to the 19. So it's first and 25. Oh. 
Malou to throw. Bucks got it up and is thrown to the sideline complete to Lindsey Scott. And Scott benches out of bounds and we've got another penalty flag. It is thrown at the 25 yard line where the tight end Norris Brown is shaken up. Pick up of 17 on that pass play. Ballou now four out of seven for 83 yards and here it is to the sidelines. In college football you need one foot in. He had him in there. He danced it real nicely here and he was called in. It was a good route and uh, Ballou is really throwing the ball. Very accurate. Waiting for the call on the penalty. They're talking to Georgia. I think there might have been a personal foul. I believe so. On the far side, and they have to decide whether or not they want second down and five or first down and it would be probably ten. Here's Bob Allier. Defensive pass interference. First down. Well, it's defensive pass interference. And apparently the man involved in the play was the tight end Brown. Somebody took him down, shook him up on the play. He got the flag. And the Bulldogs will have the football. At, well, let's call it the 26. Chain markers will come back, and it'll be first down and 10. Interesting response there. They would have had second and five. There's the tight end. Oh, He's my. Decked. <laughs> I would say that's a Ooh. case of capital interference almost. Better keep it below the head there. That's hmm. All right, Buck Ballou turns, gives the ball to Herschel Walker. Walker runs into the crowd, muscles it out for about two yards. That was Phil Ellis, a defensive end for South Carolina, involved with uh, Norris Brown on the interference call. Look there to concern Jim Carlin. His team trails 3 0. 8-10 to play first half. Make it second down at about seven from the 28. The loop puts it up. Oh, it's right in the hands of number 50, the linebacker Ed Baxley, and he let it get away from him. Big senior from St. Pete, Florida. Oh, he had it. Yeah, he should have been running the other way with that one. He's only had one, well, he's had one interception this year. He steps in. Looks like the run action, and he comes back. Try to cover a receiver. Look at that, right in his hands. It would have been number two for him, unfortunately. It had really given him a, a case of dyspepsia <laughs> if uh, Brown had turned around and caught it. Oh. Third down. Long seven. Malou gets a little heat, gets his pass off to the short man out of the backfield. Wilmot the fullback, and he's on his way down at the South Carolina 40. Harry Skipper saved the touchdown, a pickup of 31 yards. Great, great passing concept. And watch here, they're faking the run action. Number 25, Wilmot, takes the walker, comes back. They've got a lot of receivers out. And Womack just underneath and a little check through. Everybody else has gone back for coverage. He finds a seam in there and also does a good job of running. And the Bulldogs are on the move. Call it the South Carolina 41 now as Ballou goes back to throw again. It is deflected. It is caught by Womack. Deflected at the line of scrimmage and Womack grabs the football and takes it for nine yards. It was ricocheting off the hands of Chuck Allen, the big tackle at the line of scrimmage. And Jimmy said, look what I found. I'm going to run with it. <laughs> Coming into this ball game, he had a total of two receptions in seven games for 28 yards. Now he's had two back to back. You see the big tackle now bounces oh. off Allen. And Womack right. gets eight. Right into Womack's hands. Second down and two. The ball is at the 29. It is handed off inside to Ronnie Stewart, the fullback. And Stewart is pinched pretty much at the line of scrimmage. One of the key things about this passing attack of Georgia, beyond being able to move the ball, they're keeping the ball away from South Carolina. And they are running many, many more plays in South Carolina. And that's the way they got beaten the last two years. By South Carolina running 82 plays. Third down, a yard and a half. The football is at the 32. Stewart 
Stewart goes in motion. Ball goes to Walker, and Herschel dives, stretching for the first down, and it'll be close. Big guy number 70 was down in the bottom of the stack, Andrew Province. He slowed him up, and Cater came over the top. And they will measure. With six minutes and two seconds to play in the first half, and Georgia leading on a 57-yard Rex Robinson field goal, three to nothing. Looks like he's a little short. Ooh, that much. Got to mm. go here. Yep. Got to go here. You want to put three on the board, or you want to go for the seven? I think the uh, I think I'd go for it here. It's such a short distance. We're going to go for it. Radloff the center and Baloo the quarterback have to handle it well here. If they handle the snap all right, they should be able to get it. You got to figure Baloo just dives over the top of the big center. We'll see. Crowd comes to its feet. South Carolina almost jumped offside. No, they hand it off. They give it to Walker. He dives over the top for the first down to the 29, and it worked. I'll tell you one thing, he'd been, been hard pressed to stop him when he launched himself, and that's exactly what he did. Just had a power off tackle play, and he just took off. Yeah, but you need two inches, and you turn around and give it to somebody? Well, he's he, not a bad guy to give it to, I'll tell you. Well, whatever it worked, and yeah. it's first down at the 29. Buck Ballou, going to throw it, getting pressure, gets it off, good to the sideline. And pass caught by Norris Brown, tied in. Keep taken from under him by Bob Perlux. They were man-to-man -man coverage that time, and he's getting ample time to throw. He finds receivers. South Carolina was man-to-man. -man. Ballou comes back, rolls a little bit to the outside, finds his receiver. Perlot is a little bit off of him there, giving him a little cushion there. He does get him down, though, not until he picks up about nine yards. Ballou, six out of ten for 113 yards in the ball game. Second down, two. Walker up the middle. Got a first down at the South Carolina 17. Georgia offensive front's impressive. They sure have. They've been very versatile. And the biggest improvement, of course, has been in the passing game. They are really, or they should, they have an outstanding passing game. Walker now, the freshman running back, 18 carries, 59 yards. First down at the South Carolina 17. They send Arnold to the right side. And Ballou rolls that way. He puts it in the air. And the pass is caught. Caught by Clarence K, the tight end. There were two red shirts running right together. He picked on K and drilled it right in his stomach. Well, he's, re he's really on target this afternoon. Clarence K, a freshman himself from Seneca, South Carolina. He was drafted by the Chicago White Sox as a baseball player, but he's really humming the ball this afternoon, I'll tell you. Coming in here, though, he was only a 48% completion man. First down and goal to go at the Gamecock four for the Bulldogs. Walker. Not much. He might have a yard on the surge. When you've got a balanced attack as Georgia has seen here, it puts an awful lot of pressure on the defense. And certainly it's been the passing attack that's opened up the run opportunities and given the, the chances to move up and down this field. The backfield now, Walker 34, Womack 25, Stewart 33, 15th play in this possession. They started on the 20. It is Walker. And he's to about the one. I wonder who's going to get the ball on the next play. I do wonder. <laughs> It'll be third and goal to go. Just put your eyes on 34. Third down, to go. Walker dives, didn't get there. 
Great defense. Super defense. Matter of fact, Bill Ellis, Andrew Province, Bob Perlott, Chuck Allen, Emmanuel Weaver, Mark Bridges. Primarily the the bastion that he ran into. And they may have lost a yard on the play. It's fourth down coming up. There's the water, the ball carrier. Nope. Right there at, at the one yard line, and time is now called by Georgia. Buck Ballou comes to the sidelines to talk to Vince Dooley and the coaches. 2.25 to go in the first half. 2.25 to go, first half. Georgia leads 3 0. Fourth down, goal to go for the Bulldogs at the South Carolina one. They will go for the touchdown. I wonder if they're going to fake to. Walker and then Baloo keep it. He puts it up it. and South Carolina stops him as number 26 Harry Skipper comes in with a magnificent defensive play and he drills Baloo and Baloo is down. Skipper made the play for South Carolina and Buck Baloo is down after this hit. And Norris Brown was wide open in the end zone. He was hit here, could not get the ball to him. You'll see him possibly at the top right-hand corner of your screen. And so South Carolina holds a magnificent goal line defense for the Gamecocks. Timeout for an injured Buck Ballou with 2.20 to go in the first half. Watch Skipper come from the cornerback position, top of the screen now. As he came in, nobody touched him, and he really planted Buck Ballou. The pass was ruled incomplete, and you're right, Era. Brown was wide open. All he had to do was get the ball, but the rush got to him beforehand. Great play by Skipper. First down, Gamecocks, their own one-yard line. They'll just try to wedge it out as the quarterback, Harper, keeps it. And he gets it out to about the three before Georgia throws him back. Georgia, early in the first quarter, had a scoring opportunity when Robinson missed the field goal that came away empty. This possession, they have the ball 17 plays, run 79 yards downfield with it, use seven minutes and 32 seconds, and they come away empty. And the very thing that... Uh, Looks like Baloo's all right down, after the hit eight. by Skipper. And that Dooley was concerned about the fact that his team had not been possessioning the ball. And talked to him about it. And here they did, and they came up empty on the, on the on the drive. Second down and eight from the three for Carolina. And the ball off to Johnny Wright, the fullback. And out of the split back formation, he just Johnny comes Wright, banging straight ball ahead ball. behind Schechterly and Gattel and gets it out to about the seven. The Buckeyes have come back to tie Michigan State in the first quarter. If Georgia can force South Carolina to kick the ball down here, we have seen some wobbly snaps and some on the ground. They might be able to get some points just on a punt rush because they have had trouble. Let's see what happens here. Third down, a little less than four for the first down. Give the ball to Rogers, and George Rogers runs it for a first down to the 15. And they're going to be able to run the clock out, I think, before for halftime and not be pressured into that punt situation. Rogers has carried 17 times, picked up 77 yards. Coming up at halftime, we'll be talking to George Rogers, the Carolina Heisman Trophy candidate, on our Fireman's Fund flashback. He's out to the 24-yard line. He's picked up about eight, maybe nine on that carry before Jimmy Tain, defensive tackle out of Athens, brings him down for the Bulldogs, and we're coming up on a half minute to play in the first half. Georgia leading three to nothing. Well, it's been South Carolina's defense that has just been truly outstanding. Wanting Georgia's scoring efforts. Roger. He's out to the 27. He's got another Carolina first down. Clock stops with 11 seconds to play in the first half. Rogers the ball today for Carolina first down. There is George Rogers Sr. He is seeing his son play football in person for the first time today. Released from prison just a few days ago. And the first half is over. 
And it's Georgia 3, South Carolina nothing at halftime. We'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and the word from our local station. We're ready to begin the second half of play with Georgia leading South Carolina 3 to nothing. I might have said in that first half when uh, Robinson kicked the 57-yard field goal, it's a record for him. It is not, however, a Georgia record because Alan Levitt hit one from 58 yards against Vanderbilt in 1976. The stats for the first half. I think the two key things statistically is the passing yardage uh, for the two teams, 126 yards to 54, and the offensive plays where South Carolina has only been able to manage 30 plays. A year ago, in the last two years, they ran 82 plays. Georgia's run 39. They're within 11 plays of the number that they ran a year ago. They could conceivably, on this one drive, catch and pass the number of plays that they ran in the last two years. South Carolina will kick off in Georgia to receive it. The Bulldog receivers are John Tanner, number 19. Uh, John Tanner to kick off, I beg your pardon, with Scott Werner and uh, Walker, and it is uh, way, way back in the end zone. Werner isn't going to fiddle with it. We'll just put it down, the senior from Jonesboro. And we're ready to go with Georgia's first possession with Ballou, Walker, Womack, wide receivers Arnold and Scott. And the offensive front, Harper, Blakewood, Radloff, Morrison, Hudson, and Brown. Very, just a light wind blowing uh, from left to right. The ball's flying both ways, both in, in the kicking game. All right, here we go. Georgia in the red. Bulldogs sitting on a 3-0 lead, and the second half ready to go. It is Walker, and Herschel Walker picks up three as he runs it out past the 23, close to the 24. Phil Ellis is a defensive end for South Carolina. Andrew Province is a mountain of a man in the middle defense. So is Emmanuel Weaver at middle guard. Chuck Allen weighs 250 pounds. And Hal Henderson is a quick 210-pounder at end. Ed Baxley at linebacker, 225, and Walt Cater at 220. The other linebacker. Make it four-yard pickup for Walker. Second down and six. Buck Ballou back to throw it. He pumps it over the middle. He has a man, but it is thrown behind the intended receiver. Brown, the tight end. And it's incomplete. The secondary for South Carolina, Harry Skipper, who had the big, big play at the end of the first half to save the touchdown. Mark Bridges, Pat Bowen is the strong safety, and Robert Perlott, a junior at free safety. Third down and six for the Bulldogs. Amp Arnold comes to the left side wide. Ballou gives the ball to Herschel Walker. Walker finds a hole on the right side. He's outside, and he may be gone. Touchdown, Georgia. Six yards, his 10th touchdown, 23 carries, 142 yards. He has passed 1,000 yards in his freshman year. He now has 1,019. Robinson in for the extra point try. It is good. And Rex Robinson has kicked 90 consecutive extra points. And Georgia 10, South Carolina nothing. tell you he is really something when he got into that secondary it's nothing but just a sort of a delayed draw on a passing down he waits you see that it's well blocked pass rushes go beyond he breaks into the secondary there's a beautiful block thrown here by the fullback now he gets to the sideline it appears that they have leverage on him but look at him run right by everyone he's a 4 3 40 man 9 500 and no one can catch him the last guy that has a chance is number 20 Mark Bridges, and he just runs right by him. What a run. And the second time this year, he has bolted 76 yards for a touchdown. Herschel Walker, get used to the name.
Yeah, the Bulldogs are fired up after that one. South Carolina's prime return man is Horace Smith. Robinson kicks it off. He kicks it deep. There will be no return. One more look at Mr. Walker. You see here a passing down situation. Steps up, waits for the ball. Jimmy Womack, number 25, the fullback, leads through. Right there, Womack making the block. He cracks the seam. Now watch him get to the sideline. And it's interesting, from this vantage point, there were three white shirts in pursuit. They looked like they had an angle. But when you talk about a 4-3, 220-pound guy, hey, and there's Bridges with the last chance, cannot catch him, and into the end zone he goes. And it's first down, South Carolina at the 20. They send Smith in motion. And it's George Rogers in traffic for four yards. Second down and six coming as Jimmy Payne brings him down. Rogers now with 93 yards on 20 carries. The offensive unit for South Carolina. Up front, it's Cornette, Slaughter, Doyle, Austin, Gattel, Schechterly, and Scott. Second down and six. Gary Harper hands it off to Johnny Wright, the fullback, and he's out to the 27. The Georgia defensive front, Robert Miles from Montgomery. At end, Jimmy Payne, who just made a stop a moment ago, a local boy, stayed at home to play. Eddie Weaver. And Tim Parks from Chambly, which is near Atlanta. Pat McShay, who had a big play, blocked the punt in the first half. Frank Ross, another South Carolinian playing at Georgia. And Nate Taylor, the other linebacker. It is third down and three from the 27. Harper trying to quiet the crowd with a short pass that is incomplete. Georgia fired up, threw the ball to Rogers. Rogers hit as the ball arrived by Frank Ross. Uga, Scott Werner, All-American corner for Georgia. Dale Williams, the other corner from Columbus. Chris Welton, strong safety out of Atlanta. And Jeff Hip, who is the leading pass interceptor. Harper in the ball game in passing, 0 for 5. That's going to become a factor. South Carolina is going to have to throw the ball with some success. Chris Norman in the punt. Freshman from Albany, Georgia. Scott Werner is back to accept the punt for Georgia. Good snap. The kick is away. Not particularly long. Werner at the 29. And Scott Werner almost pops out of there. 43-yard punt. And Werner almost slid through the crowd. I don't know how. He brought it back 14. And time is out for the Bulldogs leading. It's a good thing it's a warm day. A little home art there. Georgia goes to work from the 44-yard line. Buck Ballou on a roll to the right, looks and throws, and he's got Brown, and Brown's got yardage. Down to the South Carolina 29. Mark it at the 30. Georgia is really jacked up right now, and it's going to be a tough series for the Carolina defense. They've got the momentum, Keith. That big, long run did it. Got them turned around. Now they're really throwing the football. First quarter, Notre Dame out by six over Navy. Navy an upset winner over Washington last week, and you see Ohio State beginning to assert themselves now against Michigan State. First down, Georgia at the Carolina 30. Baluda Walker. This time, Herschel is caught behind the line of scrimmage. It took three to get him, but they've got him back at the 34. Walker, Bill Ellis is the man that finally locked his legs. You can't say enough about the passing attack of Georgia. They, the run actions are doing a perfect job of faking the ball to Walker. The receivers are open all over the field, and of course, Below is right on target. Jim Blakewood was shaken up. Wobble back to the huddle. Big 77, a junior. Warren Gray replaces him. Blakewood did to drag him off the field. He didn't want to come out. And now Georgia's got to call a timeout here. So the Bulldogs spend the timeout with 12.04 to play in the third quarter. We resume play. Georgia's ball. Second down. 14 from the 34 of South Carolina. Bulldogs are leading four, uh, 10 to nothing. Trying for more right here as Baloo is going to put it up. Goes deep with it. Throws for Amp Arnold, and the pass is incomplete. He was sandwiched between two Carolina defenders, Harry Skipper and Robert Perlott. Fell down, but 
That was his problem, no flag. Ballou now 8 out of 15 for 152 yards. And here's the play. Weaving down the field, the inside, they had a blitz on from the right corner. And the ball was just overthrown slightly here. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it was overthrown. No, no flags, contact. no interference. Third down and 14 from the 34. There's your throw, and it goes to Walker. And Walker is caught at the 35 and goes down just inside the 35. And it is fourth down, and here comes Rex Robinson. Robinson hit a 57-yarder at the close of the first quarter to give Georgia its 3-0 lead. Looks like the wind has picked up. Uh, really blowing right now. Yeah. Blowing right into his face. This is a 51-yarder, and the breeze is very brisk. The snap was high. The kick is up. He's hammered it. It is good. Just over. Just dropped over. He just crushed that football. He's now within four of the NCAA record. So Rex Robinson builds Georgia's lead to 13 to nothing as a result of the 51-yard field goal. ABC News Special Edition Issues and Answers tomorrow at 11.30 Eastern Time will interview the Iranian Foreign Minister at 12 noon, they'll be talking to Edmund Muskie, the U.S. Secretary of State as well. It involves, of course, the hostages. Peter Jennings will be conducting the interviews via satellite. And it may be a most revealing conversation. ABC News tomorrow in a special edition of Issues and Answers. The crowd comes up for the kickoff with 11.21 to play in the third quarter. South Carolina has not been able to return a Robinson kick today. Smith has this one at the one. And the first return of the day comes back to the 18. So that's a 17-yard return where Steve Kelly brings him down for the Bulldogs. Keith, what win there is, is at the back of South Carolina being down 13 to nothing nothing I would think that they're going to have to put it up and use the win while they have it otherwise it'll be very difficult in the fourth quarter now let's see South Carolina's game plan as they come out trailing by 13 at the 19 and it's given to George Rogers and George can't find anybody but red as he hits it over the left side, Pat McShay, Frank Ross, Tim Crow, and company. All the energy. 95 yards. All the energy is in the red suits right now. Second down. It'll be second down and eight for Carolina. Gillespie is in. At the flanker. Georgia linebackers jammed right in along the line of scrimmage. Rogers trying to get outside. George finds some room. Great individual effort comes across the 30 to the 31. Eddie Weaver finally got him, but that was all Rogers once he got around the corner, and he's now at 105 yards. I tell you, he left some red shirts there on the ground. That was great running on his part. Julie's record, which is very impressive. He's been a winner here. Balls on the 31. Never had that great one, that un undefeated team. Just outside the 31, Gary Harper back to throw. Has time, sideline. Smith comes down with it. That will be his first pass completion in the ball game. I think that's what they're going to have to do to bring balance to their attack, which will help Rodgers run the ball. But he chose a very difficult pattern. You've got to throw a football. He picked up about eight yards on that pass, but he had to throw the football almost 30 yards. Yep, right clear from this hash mark to the far hash mark, one of the toughest throws there is. Here's the stats. You take a look at it here, that one long run on the part of Walker. Ball at him way ahead of Rodgers. Second down and two from the 40. It's George into the middle for one yard. And coming in to hit him, Tim 
Crow and Nate Taylor. They're not fooling around. They're sending two of them after him every time they can. You see right here, Taylor, number 47, avoiding some blockers in here. Well, he's getting a lot of help in here from a number of people. He, what uh, Rogers was trying to do is to weave back against the grain, away from the flow, but they did a great job of hanging in there, Georgia did. Third down in the yard. Hand it off to George Rogers. He breaks it big. He goes down to the Georgia 44-yard line. Over the left side, Jeff Hip, safety man, got him. Hip doesn't make the play. Georgia's got six. Well, we were talking a moment ago about, here's another look at it. It's just a beer. It's a straight handoff. It's pre-called. They do not uh, read it. They just give him the ball. He weaves to the outside. He finds daylight, and let's see what kind of shots. Look at here. There's a good attempt to tackle him. He runs right through it. Finally, is knocked off his feet. Just inside the Georgia 45, first down for South Carolina. Harper coming down the line on the option. The quarterback turns it up the field the first time today. They've used that play, and he goes to the 30. First down, Gamecocks. You can see why that was effective. They've been giving the ball to Walker 90% of the time. This time, he reverse pivoted, acted like he was going to give the ball to Walker, pitch it off, and then kept it and found a lot of daylight. I'm sorry, Rogers. i got Walker on my mind. Ball is right square on the 30. First down. Harper back. Going to throw on first down. He has room. He throws. He missed his man. He picked out the short man, Scott. He could have gone a little deeper, and Smith was pretty well open. It was a much better opportunity with Smith than it was with Scott. Well, this is the type of thing they have to develop. They have to put that ball up in the air to grab off some yardage. Speaking of yardage, you'll be watching Brian Sock throwing and Walter Payton running. On ABC's NFL Monday Night Football as the Bears and the Browns get together next Monday at 9 Eastern time. Second down and 10 from the Georgia 30. Now they go to Percy Reeves in a tailback for South Carolina. And Reeves gets three. Reeves is going out and George Rogers having... I'm sure gotten himself a drink of water and taking a breath is back in. And it's third down and eight at the 30, at the 28 of Georgia. Picked up two. Last time they were in this situation, they ran the ball. Let's see whether or not they run or pass it here. They put Smith in motion. They're going to throw it. He throws it intended for George Rogers. He tried to force it. Rogers was not available to him. It was a nil-considered pass, actually, that could have been picked up. There just wasn't anybody open that time. That's right, Keith. He tried to force it in there, but the coverage was excellent. You've got to give credit to the Georgia defense. It is. Now, Eddie Leppard is in, trying to put South Carolina on the scoreboard. This will be a 45-yard attempt. His longest field goal, 41 yards against Wichita State. So he's one for one from this distance. Snap and hold are good with the win. The kick is plenty long, and it's good. And the Gamecocks get on the scoreboard at 8.01 to go in the third quarter with a 45-yard field goal from Eddie Leppard. Well, if nothing more, that'll help them morale-wise and psychologically because they were really shocked by that long run by Walker. Penn State and Miami are even in the second quarter. They're playing that one up at Penn State. Auburn leading Florida 3-0. Georgia plays Florida next week at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Michigan out to a big lead over Indiana in the first quarter, and that one's uh, that was over in Bloomington, isn't it? Yeah. In NC State and Maryland, and Purdue Northwestern. Mark Herman continues to roll up points, and Clemson out big over Wake Forest, and here's the kickoff by South Carolina, and it's going to be returned from the four-yard line by Scott Warner. There's a penalty flag, and there's another penalty flag. And that's only the third time we have had that flag on the ground today in the ball game. Hal Henderson made the tackle for South Carolina. And let's see what happened. Mary Cahaley. Mary Cahaley. Yep. 
Flippy. It's against the Bulldogs. It occurred apparently around the 23 24 so they'll take it back to about the 11 or the 12 back right in between the two hash marks and here's Bob Allier takes you into that area where you're really not on offense and you have the ball by the receivers first down first and 10 Georgia call it the 12 753 to go third quarter 13 to 3 ball game. Bulldog. Ballou gives it to Walker. Walker puts his head down and just hammers ahead as he runs into Ed Baxley at the 15 and surges to the 16. That's the big difference in this ball game. Beyond, of course, uh, Walker's long run. Look at the stats there 152 yards to eight. Buck's been the man, really, though, in possessing the ball for Georgia. Second down play, handed off to the short man, Womack, the pullback inside. And his movement will get him up to the 18. Walt Cater and Hal Henderson are at a Paul Williams, 85. Defensive end, 205 pound sophomore from Darlington. There's Vince. Wait a minute, come here. Come here. Involved in a traffic accident a couple of weeks ago. Wife Barbara still recovering from the effects of it. Watch we for the draw. Well. Watch for the draw play here. Third and a short three. And go to Walker. And he does not get the first down. He gets up to the 20 and he runs smack into Andrew Province. And he stops. That was a good series for South Carolina defensively. So it's fourth down. Malkowitz in the punt. A man from California, family here watching for the first time. Fair catch is called by Troy Thomas. And South Carolina gets the ball back. Good field position at their own 48-yard line. It was a 32-yard punt. Time is up. That is a street that runs across the open end of Sanford Stadium here. Folks used to stand up on that bridge and freeload, but it's open to traffic normally, and uh, as a result of the safety thinkers, they said, well, let's block it off and sell seats, and that'll take care of the safety factor, and that's what they've done. And here comes South Carolina to the attack. On first down from the 48, George Rogers is back in Georgia country as he hits to the 49. Jim Stone, a big first half the against carry. the midshipman. My goodness, 170 yards. Mm -hmm. Bill Carter's going to have trouble getting his job back, isn't he? Well, he's not healthy yet, for one thing. He's still nursing that bruised thigh. Irish rolling toward a meeting with Alabama. November 15, you'll see it here on ABC. Second down and six, and Harper is caught. And he falls forward for a yard as Dale Carver makes the play for the Bulldogs. Had he been able to deal that ball off that time, Rogers had been off for a pretty good run. But he was pressed and couldn't get rid of it. It is third down and about five. Saves it. Dale Williams tipped it away from Willie Scott. <laughs> that was a great play by Dale Williams. He's replacing injured Mike Fisher, and he does a super job here. You see Willie Scott come down the field. He's 6'5", 250, 55. And the guy that Carlin says is the best tight end in the country. What Williams come over the shoulder. The ball's right there by Harper. Knocks it away, and he can't capture it. On fourth down, the kick and a big rush by Georgia. They almost got to him. It's a high hanger. It takes a South Carolina bounce, and it's going to roll dead back around the 12. And so Chris Norman does his job. He plunks a 36-yarder in there like a nine iron and puts Georgia in tough field position back at the 12. 
We've got more football coming up when this one is done. Those are the games that you'll be watching in the respective regions of the country. And we will also have some highlights for you from the Oklahoma-North Carolina game and from the Missouri-Nebraska game. Bulldogs lead 13 to 3 and Buck Ballou rolls it out. He's got room to run. He's out of bounds. Choosing to go out of bounds rather than take the punishment if he turned it upfield. And they're going to mark him out of the 17. Four minutes and 39 seconds to play in the third quarter. The first half was really quick. Slowed down a little bit here in the third quarter. See number 52, the nose man for South Carolina, Emmanuel Weaver, very fine football player. See, they're doubling up on him. Number 77, Jim Blakewood, keeping him out of the play. Back onto the field. They try to stuff it in over the left side. Where Weaver and Cater this time get the better of the contest. Walker and they stop her to Walker. To the 18. He gained the yard. yard. It was third down. Third down. And they need four. four. Walker now 28 carries and 145 yards, but he had 176 yarder. Figures heavily in it. Ballou under pressure. Down he goes. It is Phil Ellis, defensive end, roaring in the second. Appears that the momentum shifted a little bit in the ball game. Well, a year ago, Georgia had the lead, started making some mistakes. Gamecocks got all jacked up in the fourth quarter and beat him 27 to 20. Alkowitz out of his end zone, gets it away. Thomas upfield, fair catch once again. South Carolina will start on the Georgia side of the 50-yard line. That's a 30-yard punt, and it's first down South Carolina at the Georgia 40. Well, let's see what Carolina can do with it. From just inside the Georgia 40 and 3.33 to play in the third quarter. Carl West is now your fullback, number 39, a sophomore from McClinney, Florida. You know who's at the other side. West carries the ball. Oh, hey, look out! It's a foot race to the corner. It is touchdown, Carolina! Four try by Leopard. It is good. It goes in the books as a 39 yard boat. Carl West, who'd only carried the ball 20 times, but he had a pretty good average, better than 13 yards a carry, and he just blew one in. And suddenly, we have a contest. 13 to 10, Georgia's lead cut to three. Here's the play. The outside deer. And he just makes people miss and just gets into the open and there's no one that can catch him now. Williams is coming over from the far side but can't quite get to him. He's in the end zone before that. You're right, Keith. He had been averaging 13.2. He had 263 total yards. And that is a sudden turnaround My in this My only game. question is, where has he been? <laughs> well, they've been giving the ball to Rodgers. He's quick. He's just a sophomore. They will need him. George is leaving. John Tanner will kick it off for the Gamecocks now. With 3.24 to go in the third quarter. He pops it. He drives Werner way back. Scott won't fool with it. Steps out of the end zone. First down, Georgia, 20-yard line. I would just get, guess, Keith, that defense of Georgia, the linebackers were keying on Rodgers, who was lined up at left halfback, and one little step removed, and, of course, West popped through there because they were keying on the other guy. Georgia's last three possessions have been in tough field position. 12, 12, and 20. That's where they are now, 20-yard line. 
and Herschel Walker runs it up to the 25. Clock running at 3.15 to go in the third period. This quarter, been, quarter has been a very interesting one. The opening part of it, the momentum was surely in Georgia's hands and looked like they might open this ball game up. South Carolina's come back, turned it around, and it is another, it's another tough ball game again. Three points. Arnold comes wide left. And Lindsay Scott wide right. And Herschel Walker has the ball. And he's to the 30. And he's got a first down as Chuck Allen makes the tackle with help from Ed Baxley. And we've got a Georgia man coming out of the lineup. Number 76 shaken, Tim Morrison, the right guard. Radloff goes in. I think Radloff's going to double up today. Or Happy. Happy will double up. Happy will move over to guard. And Radloff will come in and play center now. Joe Happy had been snapping. Radloff in now to do it. Here's a little delay to Herschel Walker. And from the 31, he runs it out to the 37. So he's just hammering away. There's a little draw play, a little delay in there, but he can really generate speed in a hurry. 31 carries for 162 yards for that big freshman. As we look at the game, I think we lose sight of that. <laughs> he's such a big, strong, great running back that we forget that he's just 18 years old. Wait till he learns how. <laughs> I don't want to defense him. Buck Malou to throw it. He gets it off. He's got a man. The pass is complete to Lindsey Scott, the junior from Jessup, and the Bulldogs have a first down at the South Carolina 48. Great throw here. Here's Lindsey Scott. He was put down for a couple of weeks, and they brought him back in again. He served his time, so to speak. Here he is right in the open seam, deeper than the linebackers in front of the secondary. Pat Bowen comes in to make the tackle, but Bowen is playing him soft, and he's well out of it until he's got the ball. Right there, he steps right in. Ballou put it right there. Ballou on a roll, gets a no time, no time. The first man shooting through there looked like he was going to give Buck a little time to throw it, but then along comes Mr. Paul Williams, and yeah. he just buried him all the way back inside the Georgia 40. They had a safety blitz on that time. They guessed right. They didn't get the protection, and it was a big play because it looked like Georgia was on the move again, but look here. They've got uh, second and what, 22? Mm, that was a big loss. About 23, actually. Coming up on a minute to go in the third quarter. Third sack of a Georgia quarterback by the Gamecock defense. Ballou pitches the ball to Herschel Walker. Walker turns it upfield, muscles his way for about four or five yards, but he's muscling with a couple of big dudes. Andrew Province and Chuck Allen, 255 and 250. Well, Carlin says Chuck Allen's really a great football player. Walker hobbles off the field, limping. Looked like his right ankle was hurting him some. Well, that's the one that kept him out of six quarters this season. Ball is at the 43. It's third down and long, and I mean about third and 19. Pass to the sideline, oh. almost picked off. Almost picked off, intended for Norris Brown, and Pat Bowen stepped in front of him and almost picks his pocket. Mm. We have 15 seconds to play in the third quarter, and there's Herschel Walker on the sidelines to get medical treatment. Here you see number 88 coming down the field, crosses over. That's Norris Brown. Now they've got a kick on. And a fair catch by Troy Thomas. Back at the South Carolina 21, 38-yard punt. And here's the great concern right now for everybody who is rooting for the Georgia Bulldogs is how bad is this right ankle of Herschel Walker? Well, I think it was the Mississippi game where he originally injured it, and he missed about six quarters of football, and consider his statistics in the yardage had he been playing in those six quarters. Let's call this one the 22. It's actually closer to the 22. Carl West, who scored the Carolina touchdown on that 39-yard burst, is the up man out of the eye formation. Rodgers is deep. George has got it. Gets leverage and turns the corner to the 26. He picked up about four. Third quarter is over. 13 to 10. Georgia leads. We'll continue after this commercial message and a word from our local station.
They're retaping the right ankle of Herschel Walker, the ankle that has bothered him quite a bit this season. Heard it at the old Miss game. They say he will be able to play some more right now. South Carolina trailing by three starts the fourth quarter with a second down from their own 26 yard line. And they hand the ball off to George Rogers, who cuts it up to the 30. Now they'll be looking at third down and about two. Little less maybe than two. Vince told, uh, Dooley told me yesterday, Keith, that he was really concerned about the fourth quarter. He says South Carolina has outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter, 42 to nothing. Third and a yard and a half. Rogers hit hard, but just keeps on spinning. And he really is a big, strong man. Hey, he got the first down. What a run. Looked like he was stopped. Here's the statistics. You can see that South Carolina did pick up considerably in that third period, 246 to 321 in total yardage. But look here at the turnovers. This has been an excellently played game. No turnovers for either team. Possession slightly in favor of Georgia. Robert Miles, defensive end for Georgia, is down on the field. Timeout call for the injury. And we are just 35 seconds into the fourth quarter with Georgia leading 13 to 10. All right. Tim Bobo replaces Robert Miles, a defensive end for Georgia. South Carolina has a first down. The ball is at their own 33. They trail by three. Split the backs. Hand it off to West. And West has scored the touchdown for them. Slips in over the right side and runs it to the 42. Good looking young back. Notre Dame beating up on Navy. But they can't take away the big game, the win that Navy had last week. You see Auburn had jumped out to lead over Florida and Purdue rolling against Northwestern. Second down and two from the 42 of South Carolina. Give it back to West again. Looks like the ball might have squirted loose. But the officials jump in, whistle it dead. Don't think they have the first down on the play. I saw Rogers look in there. It looked like George had seen that ball get pretty loose. But the Gamecocks retain possession. Rogers has carried 28 for 136. Walker 32 for 165. But Herschel had a 76-yard touchdown run. Well, that was a story at the beginning of the game, and it remains so. Third down, a half a yard. Quarterback, Harper, first down, surging to the 45. This is the kind of thing that worries Dooley. Vince scared that South Carolina is going to get enough going that they can possess the ball a long time. South Carolina has been strong in the fourth period. All 12 Gamecock first downs have been made on the ground. The passing game has been rather weak. Harper keeps it on that option. And he turns it across midfield to the Georgia 49 on the play. They've run that twice today, and both times it's been successful. Looks like he has a vest on for uh, rib protection, it appears. Black vest. Yeah. Second down five. George Rogers. They had him for a yard loss. Scott Werner had a hold of him. He just turned it upfield and picked up two more yards after Werner got a hold of him. Good defensive reaction by Georgia. They were trying to fool him with the motion and go back again, but Georgia reacted very well to it. Now, here's one of those plays. Third down and four. Rodgers is now at 137 yards. Crowd coming up. Yelling defense for Georgia.
Rodgers has it. Good block. First down. Oh, no. And uh, Carolina jumps on it, but the ball flew out of Rodgers' hands, went backwards. Number 60, or six, yes, Austin 60, looked like covered the ball. George had his first down, but the ball came loose, and he lost the first down. He had a good opening here. He found it. He really turned it on here. Let's see when he loses the ball. What it's, there it is right there. Someone puts his helmet right on the football. On fourth and a yard and a half, Chris Norman is in the punt. Werner is deep for Georgia. No pressure on Norman. He hits it a mile high. Watch the bounce. They may stick Georgia back deep. They are going to have him inside the 10, back at the 6. And so Georgia's field position continues very poor here in the second half. 13 to 10 ball game, 10 29 to play. At the six yard line, first down, Georgia. Herschel Walker's back in the lineup. The quarterback, Ballou, keeps it, tries to duck in behind Walker. And he turns her all the way around behind Herschel and runs it back to about the seven. Sort of a circuitous route for a yard. Walker is back, having had the sore ankle retaped. Give you an idea of Georgia's field position. The last four possessions, including this one, it's been 12-yard line, 12, 20, and now six. At the seven, Ballou gives it to Walker, and Walker's to the 10. Picks up three. It'll be third down and six. Well, they really have had tough field position. You don't want to take any chances down here, make an arrow. They still have a three-point lead. See the two sidelines. There's anxiety on both sides between the hedges today. Third and six. Put, put, it, put it up. He's got Arnold. He's got a first down at the 23. That's a gutsy call. Gutsy yeah, that call. took some gizzard, didn't it? You bet it did. It's interesting. Arnold just comes right down there and. They're giving him a lot of room here, a lot of air. He just turns out, and Ballou puts it right there, and Arnold makes a first down. And I'll tell you this, that was a big, big play. Now out at the 22, first down, Georgia. Walker. And Herschel comes to the 28, where Ricky Haygood rides him down. He's from Easley, a freshman. Walker now, 173 on the ball game on 34 carries. And Buck Ballou's had a pretty good afternoon himself. He really has. He's been right on target. Right now, it'd be a hard vote, wouldn't it, for the MVP between Ballou and Walker? Yeah. They've got eight and a half minutes to go. Hand it off to the fullback, Womack. Jimmy's up to the 29, picks up a yard or so. And the clock shows 8.20 with these games coming up following this one. Scattered all over the country, so in the respective region of interest, those are the games you'll be watching, plus some highlights out of Oklahoma, North Carolina, and Missouri, Nebraska. That's two big ball games out in the Plains country. Third down and three. Ballou to throw, pressure's on. They've got it. Big play by Pat Bowen, the strong safety blitz from the top side, and he got it. Well, they've been very successful with that. Corner blitz, strong safety is what he is, lined up on the line of scrimmage and came right in there and goes after the passer. Top of the screen, number 25. You see him coming in here, and Ballou has no chance. Fourth sack, minus 40 yards on the four sacks. The kick is away. It's a bad kick by Malkowitz. Fielded by South Carolina. Up at the 47, Mark Bridges was the man in the short position. 32-yard kick. And here's South Carolina at their own, at the Georgia 47. So the Gamecocks have certainly had uh, great field position here in this second half. Wysocki, you see, put his name uh, a little further along in the Maryland record book. And Virginia and Tennessee. Tennessee's really beat up. A lot of injuries. 
at the 47 for the game cuts. They send West in motion, give it to Rogers. George is loose on the sideline. <laughs> they mark him out of bounds back at the 37. He hit the chalk at the 37. Well, you think he doesn't have strength and power? Also reads the daylight well, which is, look at him, just absolutely run over a tackler. Stepped out of bounds right there at the 37. Wow. The officials need to move the Georgia players back beyond the restraining line. Looks to me like they're up pretty close. They do push them back a little bit. They bring the change across. George had about 15, maybe 16 on that carry. But where he hit the chalk was right about the first down area, so they stretch him out. This may and be they're a, short. This, this drive may be the moment of truth for Georgia. Rodgers now 31 carries and 149 yards. <laughs> he looks just as strong. Oh, he gets stronger, Errol, I think, as the game goes on. That last run certainly looked like it, didn't it? Like O.J. Simpson used to do, you know. He'd wobble around once in a while, and you'd think he wouldn't be able to make it back to the huddle, and all of a sudden, pow. Don't, remi gotcha. don't remind me about that fellow. <laughs> <laughs> It still brings pain, huh? <laughs> sure does. <laughs> we have had no turnovers in the ball game so far today, and we've only had three penalties in the ball game. And it has been a contest. They need a half yard for the first down. Second down play, Rogers. Right into the middle to the 35. And that is a first down. They have gone on a quick count on a number of occasions this afternoon. I think they caught Georgia on a couple of them. Also, uh, Jimmy Carlin told me yesterday, he says, don't be surprised if you see a no-huddle offense. Has not shown it yet. We've got 6.55 to play in the game. Georgia 13, South Carolina 10. Rogers. George spinning. He's across the 30. They'll mark him at the Georgia 27. That's two yards short of the first down. Rogers now at 160 yards. Telling him, Dooley is concerned. Rightfully so. Second down. Two. Rodgers has daylight. Punches inside the Georgia 20. First down, South Carolina. Chuck Slaughter, Charleston, Jr., Joe Doyle, Wilmington, North Carolina, Jr., Mark Austin, the Union, South Carolina, sophomore. Big play. And Rodgers, walking a little gingerly, started out toward the sidelines. Looks like he's shaken up. And time is called. Time called in behalf of South Carolina here as the trainer comes on to talk to George Rogers. Time is out with 6.03 to play in the football game. The Gamecocks have it first down at the Bulldog 20. George Rogers has gone to the sidelines. He's standing over there talking to the trainer and the coaches. Ashley Reeves has come in to replace him at tailback. Gary Harper comes up with the Gamecocks to the 21st down. Harper gives it to West, and West is to the 17 for three. And Rogers is coming back. Well, I'll tell you, I can understand how they beat Michigan. I saw Michigan last week and ran up 45 points against Illinois, and. George Rogers prop, 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 almost single-handedly did the job, and I'll tell you this, he's some kind of back. He's got my respect. Second down, long seven at the Georgia 17. Rogers. Oh. Bimbo! Loose on the ground. Georgia's got it. First turnover. George Rogers had gone out with his arm hurt, 
He comes back, can't hold the ball as the Bulldogs knock it loose and recover the ball, Tim Parks. Well, he had taken him down the field. Tough break for him. Incredible as hard hitting as this game has been, Keith, there's only been one turnover. You got to figure that if his arm is numb, he can't squeeze it, and he couldn't hold it, and it's Georgia's ball at the 16. And Carolina's defense is hot. They rise up at the 15. A look at the fumble. Take a look and see. Motion, and then they deal the ball off to Rodgers. One man misses him right here. He just makes him miss. No, looked like the, I look, think he was just trying to switch the ball when it like came it. out. Yep. Didn't look like he was really stripped of it, did it? Yeah, that's right. Second down, a little more than 10. On a delay, Herschel Walker. And Walker out to the 20 for about four, four and a half. He's carried the ball 36 times now for 177 yards, and that 36 carries in the game is a new Georgia record for the number of carries. Nobody in the world feels worse about what happened than uh, number 38. You can see a tremendous number of turnovers that uh, Georgia's been able to get during the course of the year. Third and long, third and six. It's Walker. He's short of the first down as he reaches the 25. Ed Baxley brought him down. Big problem here, Keith, is that the possession type of football that South Carolina uses, the clock is against them. It's 359 right now. So it looks like they're going to have to have at least one big gainer in there somewhere if they expect to get into the end zone. Thomas deep. Malkowitz to kick. Kicked six times, averaging just over 28. Big rush. Roughing the kicker against South Carolina. Roughing the kicker. Forget what's going on at the other end. Emmanuel Weaver came flying over the top, trying to get to the ball. He did not touch the ball. He came crashing into the kicker. And the roughing call is a break for Georgia. Didn't touch it. Now watch him. He comes right on over the top, and he bangs into Malkowitz. Yep. They were trying to block the kick, trying to get that ball. If he'd have touched it, then all right. All right. Here's the call. Well, the kicker. First well, down, Georgia. They both have two timeouts left. Both two timeouts, 339. At the 40. Buck Ballou gives it to Herschel Walker. Walker gets a big block on the right side, and look at the big guy go. The freshman from Wrightsville at the first down at the Carolina 35. Boy, what a dramatic turn of events. 207 yards for Herschel Walker. That was a big play. Seven yards and a freshman. Mm. They don't rest him either. <laughs> yeah. Just keep giving it to the big horse. And He's got it again on that delay. Runs it up the middle. And runs it down to the South Carolina 28. That's seven more. When you get to thinking about running backs, you think about Dorsett. I saw him. He ran 208 yards, I think it was, against us in his freshman year when I was coaching at Notre Dame. But he didn't have the size. And I don't think he probably could run with Walker. He was not a 4-3 man. But he had just great moves. There's the other great back on the other side of the field, George Rogers. Second down and three. They send it full back. Womack, oh. he's loose. Womack steps out of bounds at the South Carolina six and Georgia's rolling. Womack's carried the ball four times for 29 yards today, but he's been involved in some big plays. 
Well, that, that uh, roughing of the kicker was really a big turn of events in this ball game. And of course, the fumble by Rogers. Two minutes and 18 seconds to play. The ball is just outside the South Carolina six. Stewart in motion. Walker. Down to the five. He's now carried it 40 times for 215 yards. Don't think there's any question about who your most valuable players are. Got to be Herschel Walker for Georgia. It's got to be George Rogers for South Carolina. The respective universities will get $1,000 for each of their general scholarship funds from Chevrolet. Just no need to ballot today. I'll tell you this, great performances by both. It is Walker one more time to the two. It was expected to be, it was advertised, it was billed, it was dramatized as the battle between these two young men. It has been that way. They have been the prime players in the drama. They have performed nobly, no matter who wins. Well, one is a senior and one is a freshman. We have 124 to play in the football game. Timeout is called Georgia. 124 to play in the ball game. Georgia 13, South Carolina 10. Georgia undefeated. They have the football. Third down, goal to goal. From just outside the South Carolina 2. Herschel Walker. He is caught by Baxley. He fights his way to the 1. It'll be fourth and goal from the 1. Georgia undefeated, does not play Alabama. Alabama undefeated, playing Mississippi State this weekend. South Carolina having lost only one time, surely to be on their way to a prime goal. Georgia will go for the touchdown. Georgia plays Florida next week, another big ball game in the Southeastern Conference. On fourth and goal, Walker! He did not score. He did Walker not score. South Carolina's Carolina. defense, led by Walt Cater, stops him Carolina with 45 seconds to play in the football game. Boy, have they put on goal line defenses. Woo, look where that ball is. Prudential College scoreboard with Chris and Dave coming up right after this game, and then the second game of our collegiate doubleheader today across the country, regional telecasts. Chris and Dave will have details on what's been going on in Norman and Lincoln as well. So here's South Carolina getting the ball just outside the goal line. No more than a foot away. Only 45 ticks remaining on the clock and a three-point Georgia lead and Harkless got the throw it. He hums it out. He's got a man open. The pass is complete after the 17 to Tim Gillespie. And the clock stops as the chains are moved in South Carolina hurries with 37 seconds to play in the ball game. South Carolina with one timeout remaining. From the 17, Harper throws to the sidelines and throws incomplete. And that used up more time. Now to 29 seconds to play. Harper has completed two passes and 11 attempts for 25 yards today. That's certainly been the difference in this ball game. Ballou had a tremendous passing statistic, both in completions as well as yardage. There's the two stars. Harper back to throw it. Georgia in a deep drop. Pass is incomplete in and out of the hands of Gillespie. Dale Williams, number nine, the cornerback, knocked him loose from the football at 23 seconds remaining to play. Well, they're going to take it to the last gas, weren't they? Well, they really are. This has been some kind of ball game, I'll tell you. Two well-matched teams. Two good teams. Third down and ten. They've got to hook up on something here. A little more pressure on Harper. His pass is thrown away. Intercepted by Jeff Hip. And Jeff Hip 
returns it downfield to the South Carolina. 21 and 8 seconds to play in the ball game, and that will do it. You know, it's interesting, Keith, that the one turnover in the game, the fumble by Rodgers, may be the determining factor. There he is. He had a great game. And that one turnover, a well-played, clean ball game, 35 rushes for 168 yards. And it's unfortunate that that one turnover may be, be the difference because they could have driven for the I would be the last person in the world because I think he's a terrific young man. I got to know him well this summer as he traveled across the country with us. I have got to think, though, that the injury to his arm or his hand had something to do with it. Very possible. One play, that's it. The snap, the clock. Carolina has one timeout remaining. It is not called. The game is over.